Let's now go through the steps for plotting a load impedance on the Smith chart and transforming it to obtain an input impedance at any distance along the transmission line from the load. To do this, we're going to follow the five steps shown here. First, we're going to normalize the load impedance that's relative to V0. Then we're going to plot that normalized load impedance on the Smith chart. Now, once it's normalized, we're going to use lowercase z's. Then we will transform it down the transmission line by rotating around the Smith chart. And we're going to rotate it distance d in wavelengths. Then we can read off the input impedance from the Smith chart. And then we will have to denormalize. So we'll have to change our lowercase z to capital Z. So here we transform capital Z to lower Z. Let's start with step number one. To use the Smith chart, we normalize the load impedance by dividing by the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So in this case, lowercase zl is equal to big ZL capital Z naught, which we're going to split that up into a real and imaginary part. So I'll call this little r for the load plus the complex part, which is x at the load. So lowercase represents a normalized impedance, and only lowercase z's are plotted on the Smith chart. Capital Z's are unnormalized impedances, actual impedances. To plot lowercase zl, let's look at a few features of the Smith chart. The real part, little r, of the normalized load impedance is represented by circles on the Smith chart, as you can see here. What values of r can we have? This r right here. So if you look on the outside of the Smith chart, you can see r is 0. And right here, the circles, the values of r get larger and larger. And then here, we have an r of infinity. So r can vary from 0 to infinity. Next, we have the imaginary part, lowercase x. The imaginary part, arcs of constant x, of the normalized load impedance. These are represented by arcs on the Smith chart. The red arcs are capacitive, so these are negative reactances, and the green are um, inductive, so they're positive reactances. X can vary from negative infinity to positive infinity. Here the real and imaginary R and X values are shown superimposed on the same Smith chart. Notice that the R circles and the X arcs are mutually perpendicular, so no matter what intersection point you pick, they're perpendicular to each other. This means that we have a curvilinear coordinate system that covers all possible values of the normalized impedance little z. The Smith chart also has two pairs of scales along the very outside of it. We can use the outer pa pair of scales to rotate an impedance a set distance down the transmission line measured in number of wavelengths. So that means if you get a distance in meters, you have to transform it to wavelengths before you can use the Smith chart. We would rotate an impedance in the clockwise direction to transform the impedance down the transmission line towards the generator. Or instead, we can rotate in a counterclockwise direction to transform the impedance down the transmission line towards the load. Let's look at the same example as last time, but this time we will use the Smith chart. That is, let's obtain the input impedance along a transmission line terminated by a short circuit load. Remember from last time, we are expecting the input impedance to be completely imaginary. We obtain that here. Along the transmission line, no matter what D is, first increasing 
to infinity, as shown here, passing through an open circuit, then going from minus infinity to infinity, and so forth. For step one, we normalize the load impedance. The load impedance is capital ZL, let's see, capital ZL is zero, so what is the normalized load impedance? We're going to go ahead and do step one. 